Alrighty guys, so we are going to be talking today on periodic perfection about titrations. So what is a titration? What do we use it for? Why are we talking about it in acids and bases? And why has it spawned an entire cottage industry of memes? All right, here we go. So a titration, hello. is a procedure where we can use a standard solution to determine the concentration of an unknown solution. So you've got two solutions, one's an acid, one's a base. One of them you know the concentration of, the other one you don't. And by doing some careful experimentation followed by some careful math, you can figure out the unknown concentration. So there's a couple of terms in titrations we have to talk about. The first one is something called equivalence point. The equivalence point is also known. Wow, that's a seriously squeaky chair. Let's try to ignore that. The equivalence point is also known as the end point. Okay, and that is defined as the point at which equal amounts of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions have been added. Now this does not mean that equal amounts of acid and base have been added because some acids like hydrochloric acid give one hydronium ion per or one mole of hydronium ions per one mole of acid. But some of them like sulfuric acid which is H2SO4 gives more than one mole of hydronium ions. It gives two moles of hydronium ions for every one mole of acid because it has two hydrogens in it. So um, we refer to it in terms of the moles of or the amounts of hydronium ions and hydroxide ions. Now usually your equivalence point is indicated by a color change. And the only way we can get a solution to change color is we have to use an appropriate indicator. You might remember at the beginning of our unit, we talked about table M. We had all sorts of indicators that you can use um, to determine whether something's an acid or whether something's a base. The most common indicator used in titrations is phenethylene. Occasionally you might use methyl orange or methyl blue, depending on where you want your endpoint to fall. But phenethylene is a really good indicator because it has a very clear delineation on its color change. So if you look, We've got a solution, okay, that we are adding a little bit of a base to, that's an acid in the flask, and in that flask is also some phenethylene, and drop by drop, we're adding a base to it until it hits a color change. So how do you know when there's a color change? You look at it, okay? In phenethylene, we would be going from colorless to pink. You want your endpoint to be the spot where it just barely starts to blush, but it stays pink. Okay, and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So we're going to go through the procedure for a titration. I know we're not going to get to do our titration lab in class. I've actually written you a virtual titration that can get you a little uh, fairly close to the experience. So the first thing we would do is we would place a known concentration of a base in a burette, and we secure that burette to a support rod. That looks something like this. Here's our support rod with our burette in the support rod. Now, at this point, we have to talk a little bit about how we read a burette because it's a little bit different from, say, a graduated cylinder. If you look here on the right at our example burette, we might notice that the numbers get smaller as you go up because when you fill a burette, you're filling it up and then releasing solution from that burette. And as you release the solution, you're using it. So if you read the numbers properly on a burette, it shows you how much you have used, not how much is still in it. We'll talk about that a little bit more. So here, this if you were looking at it traditionally in terms of like, you know, a graduated cylinder, you might say that this is 14.55 milliliters. And that's because, I'm going to go backwards, 
we read it from the top down, okay? Here's our 14, here's our 15, we read it from the top down, okay? So let's practice reading a burette really quick. Here is a burette, okay? You'll notice smaller number on the top, larger number on the bottom. How much, or no, let me rephrase that. What is the proper reading on this burette? Alrighty, so if you said 24.55 milliliters, you'd be wrong. Because we don't read from the bottom up, we read from the top down. So this would actually be 23.45 milliliters. Alrighty, um, see it's not 24.55, we're not reading from the bottom up, we're reading from the top down. Okay. Now that we know how to read a burette, step two, you're going to pour a given amount of acid into an Erlenmeyer flask, okay? Base in one, acid in the other. We could easily reverse this, but generally this is the procedure we're going to fix. So you're going to put a few drops of phenothaline into your flask. So let's think about this for just for a second. Go get table M and tell me if we have acid in our flask, and we put phenothaline in the flask, what color will the contents of the flask be? Alrighty, so if you said the contents of that flask would be colorless, you're 100% right, because it doesn't start to turn pink until we're up around pH a little bit above seven and into eight. All right, so here's an example of an acid-based titration. We have sodium hydroxide, in our burette and in this titration we have a solution of nitric acid sorry it took me a second in our flask and we have that phenothaline in it we add our base one drop at a time watching for the point where the color starts to change and then stays that new color but without overshooting it and we'll talk about overshooting in just a second so we're gonna slowly add our base to our acid, continuously swirling as we go. And the point at which our neutralization occurs is called the end point, and this is indicated by our color change. It's going to change from colorless to pale pink. Now it's super important that you don't add any more base beyond the point of that color change. If you do, that is called overshooting your end point. By keeping it at that point, you should have a neutral solution and we can record the volume reading on our burette. Now, the burette, remember, shows you how much you have released, not how much it contains. So if it takes 10 milliliters of base to reach the end point in our acid, that would be reflected in the reading on our burette. Now, one little thing I wanna point out, overshooting the end point is super common, okay? Um, and so much so that there's like hundreds of memes out there. It is commonly thought of as one of the most frustrating things in chemistry is doing a titration and ending up beyond your endpoint. Here, I'll just show you a few of these. Um, I mean, it, there's so many. And once you've done our virtual lab, you will understand that frustration, okay? Actually, at this point, I introduced the titration formula which I'm going to do. So if you turn to table T in your reference table, you will find, remember that's your very back page, right at the bottom, third from the bottom, you've got your titration formula. And that formula is MAVA equals MBVB. And here's what that stands for. Molarity of the hydronium ions times volume of the acid equals molarity of the hydroxide ions times volume of the base. Now, we repeat our experiment as many times as possible. Why? Why would you want to repeat an experiment? And that's so your results can be averaged and be as accurate as possible. Alrighty, guys. So at this point, I realized that um, we needed to cut this in half because our video was just really getting too long.
So our next Ed Puzzle will be part two, where you will be practicing those molarity calculations and some practice regions questions.